So we are actually headed to the greenhouse, which Dean is fighting with his phone to get the <laughs> GPS. I LG phones. <laughs> the GPS to take him to the right spot. Anyway, we're going to the greenhouse today because we are picking out um, plants for our garden. Dean has it plowed and tilled and semi ready to go. We just have to get plants. Um, we just finished the boys piano recital. Some of them have swapped some clothes because they were not excited about wearing button up shirts and polo shirts and no hats. Right, Isaiah? <laughs> Anyway, um, I have some clips from the piano recital that I'll throw in here in just a bit so you guys can hear each of them playing. <laughs> what plants we want? The same thing as you used last time. Go Stepper! They actually have um, flowers too. Not this year. I don't have any flowers this year. They do too have flowers. Last year I got a good bit of flowers <laughs> for our patio garden because I didn't have anything for that one yet and I think this is where I got everything for the patio garden. Almost everything. Maybe the grasses came somewhere else. Anyway, I'm not really going for looking or to look for flowers this year. Um, we really just need our vegetables. But if I see some flowers that I would like, Dean's going to let me buy some. <laughs> Is he? So you can say that when the camera's turned on and he'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The camera was turned off. Would you say no? <laughs> Do I ever say no? You don't. You don't. But still, he never knows. Yeah, Ezra. Hi. How was, your, um, how was your recital? Did you have fun? You did a good job.
staring into your skull? Yeah. My soul. Oh, your soul. Okay. In my soul. I could hear everyone whispering behind me while I was like getting ready. They were like, were you guys nervous? I mean, I wasn't nervous until they started whispering Mom, while I was playing my song. Mom, I wasn't nervous until walking in and everyone was staring at me. Well, Mom, I walked in and everyone stared at me. When I did my song, I wasn't nervous. Um, and then when I did the fancy bow, I, I got nervous. You did a good job with your fancy bow. Yeah. So the boys all stay in a back room, and when they come out, they didn't realize how many people were actually there, so it was a little shocking to see so many people there. Um, but they all did a really good job, and I was impressed with them. I hear them at home practicing every day, but it's not the same thing as sitting down and like playing a song at your best, I guess, um, and playing song after song after song with no stopping or any of those things. So they did a really good job. All of that practice is paying off, boys. And um, we had a bunch of beginners. Ezra's only had three lessons, even though he's done some like um, app piano stuff. But he did a really good job too. And it was good. It was the yeah, first that's... time we've done a recital in about three years just with the pandemic stuff. So um, it was a good time to get together with everybody and see how everybody else's kids who have been taking lessons have been progressing. So anyway, next stop, plants. Okay, Jay, tell me what's what in the garden. So, like, these are all squash, I think. Um, and Zucchini like, and squash, right? Zucchini and squash. Okay. These ones that have, like, the jagged edges and stuff and, like, mostly buried are the tomatoes. Okay. And the tomatoes and the, like, this whole row is tomatoes and these two are tomatoes. Okay. Um, I think these, no, maybe it's these ones. He planted them. He would know. Which ones are the har jalapenos? Jalapeno, jalapeno. At the end of that row, there's two jalapenos. The jalapenos are the two from the front and the two at the end, and the rest in from here to here and Those are here. Those like the big moments. Okay. Here are all bell peppers, and that is a harbinel. I hope you all know what's what, because this sounds very chaotic to me. I'm not sure what, <laughs> like what you're. Yes, here. These are just tomatoes to me. <laughs> Tomatoes, right here, I know that these are tomatoes, jalapenos, bell those peppers. Are I don't even know what those are. I didn't see those. Probably all another bell pepper. Chaos in the garden. I mean, that's a harbor now. Way at the corner, away from all the others. Yeah, the little black pot. pot in the corner. They planted the, the hottest pepper we got way down there because they think it's gonna We're make our, our bell peppers. Make <laughs> gonna make the bell peppers spicy. Because we planted it far away in okay. a corner in a pot. So I see you guys did um, triple insurance. Um, the stuff in the aisles, right? Are you gonna do that everywhere? Or? Yes. Yeah, we're just spraying it across. Hmm. Sun's coming back out. Well, so we've got the other half of the garden, and what's that gonna be, Hub? Oh, no. I mean, my okra fails every year, but I keep trying it. <laughs> I wouldn't mind some okra. But we got we got two rows of potatoes today, which you see we got potatoes popping up from last year from last year's potatoes. <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah. Even though you plowed and tilled? I didn't get them all. Good news, I didn't didn't cut, that down. cut them in half. That's what you're supposed to do before oh, you plant Oh, that's them. weird. <laughs> but, like that. Yeah, we just had that's one row last year, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I wanted more potatoes. Yeah, this is a potato yeah. plant. Um, yeah. Then we could do green beans and peas. But, you know, everybody likes sugar snap peas. Right there, you. One row of those or something. I think we tried to do peas once and they, it was just too hot for them. They're supposed yeah. to be early too. Yeah, but we've had really good luck global with them warming. Too, so. um, Yeah, you had the biggest. Global warming. warming. <laughs> yeah, I feel like for the past few years when we've done this garden, we've not done like our early cool weather crops. We've always just waited until May and planted things that need lots of heat. We could try um, planting them for a fall crop though this year. Like when this starts dying out, we could put in a lettuce bed and all of the cool weather things, cabbage, broccoli. I think you can plant those kind of towards fall. We'll do okay. All right, so here's the beginnings of our wee little garden. <laughs> our wee garden. Isaiah. 
that stick. He like he's having a hard time keeping it up. <laughs> he's like hitting me with it. He's so funny. Oh. He caught it in in the air. He caught it after bounced off his head. Yeah, that's right. I'm best. So come on, do it again. Smaller stick, guys. That way you can actually throw it, Jay. Seems to like the big one. Hey guys, so I'm actually getting ready to leave and go to Johnson City, but before I go, I wanted to make the boys some of this like tick repellent shampoo and body wash. And I thought I would show you guys what I do because we use this every single year. I love it. It works really well. Um, we have a lot of dog ticks around here. I don't know if we have that many deer ticks, but just because ticks can carry all kinds of like nastiness, um, including Lyme disease, I want to do my best to keep them off of the boys um, in as natural a way as possible. And this is one way that I have found that works really well to do that. So um, I'll put links in the description box below to all of this stuff. But this is just an unscented soap. It's, let's see, body wash, bubble bath, and shampoo. And it's by Everyone, Everyone brand. Three-in-one soap, unscented with calendula, chamomile, and aloe vera. So really good. And it comes with a little pump top that we'll put in there when we're done. And then I use this Kid Safe plant therapy essential oil called Shield Me. Um, and this, let's see, it contains citronella, pink grapefruit, bourbon geranium, rosalina, and patchouli oil and kind of keeps the bugs away. So you could even put this in just a plain carrier oil and make like an oil that you put on your skin to keep bugs away if you're gonna camp out one night or whatever. But this is just full of essential oils that bugs don't really like. So I use this stuff every single year and I just put a certain number of drops in the shampoo and mix it up really well, put the pump top in it and I stick this in the boy's shower. So. Um, every day, every other day, whenever they're taking their showers, they wash their hair and their whole body, and it gives them just a tiny hint of scent that tends to work to keep the ticks off of them. Um, so if it's like middle May, and we've already had some ticks uh, crawling on the boys and stuff because they're like we have a lot of grass and a lot of property, and the boys are always outside playing this time of the year, and it never fails that will find a tick crawling on their clothes or in the house because one of the dogs brought it in, that kind of thing. Um, and so I really want to get on top of making this stuff because we don't want any bites if possible. Um, let's see, this has 32 ounces in it. And this says a two to 4% dilution before going outdoors. So I'm gonna do a higher dilution because I really want it to work. So I'm gonna do the 4% dilution. Um, let me see. I think six drops per ounce is 1%. So six fours is 24 per ounce. And 24 times 32. I need a calculator or a piece of paper. <laughs> I can't do that in my head. I'm sure I could if I really wanted to try, but I don't. So there you go. All right. I am fairly certain it's six drops is 1%. I'll have to look that up, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. All right. So what did I say? 32 times 24. <sighs> All right. So 788 drops. And I do know that you can, um, there's like, you can look up online. It'll tell you like this many drops is in a teaspoon or whatever. And you can figure it out that way. I think I'll do that. And that way I can just add a certain number of teaspoons. Um, you can take this little reducer out of the top and just pop it out with a, like a butter knife or some sort of knife. And then you can pour it in your teaspoons. Anyway, let me look that up 
and I'll get back to you and I'll show you exactly how much it's supposed to go in this size bottle. Okay, so I looked all of that up and um, sorry for the noise over here, Judah's washing his hands, the sink. Anyway, I looked all of that up and it said nine drops of essential oil in one ounce is a 1% dilution. So, um, I want a 4% dilution. So nine times four, 36, and I have 32 ounces. So 32 times 36 is 1,152 drops. It's a lot, and I don't wanna count out that many drops. So I looked up how many drops were in a teaspoon, and it's 100 drops per teaspoon. So all in all, I'm gonna need three tablespoons of this and just under one teaspoon to get me close to that amount. All right, so I did not, hey Judah, will you get me um, a butter knife please out of the drawer? I need to pop this top off. I actually, this is only 30 milliliters of oil. Hopefully this is enough. Thank you, friend. Okay, and I'm trying to be very careful not to touch it because or throw it on myself or in the floor, which I did. Okay, Woo. this stuff smells like citronella big time. All right, so I'm gonna, actually I need um, I need a um, funnel. I've got a little bitty funnel, so let me go grab that real quick. Okay, so I just learned that Ezra stole my little silicone funnel, so I only have this plastic one that'll fit in this bottle. Plastic and essential oils don't mix very well, but it won't be in contact with it long enough for it to be that big of a deal. All right. There's one tablespoon. I don't think this is gonna be enough. Two tablespoons. Yep, not even. So it's like probably what would that be, 600, and I would say that's two teaspoons, so about 800 drops is what I think I got out of there. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so that's not even, that's not even gonna end up being a complete 4%, so it'll be like 3%-ish, but that's okay because on the bottle it says to go between two to 4% for it to work really well. Okay, so I've added that in here with my soap. I'm just gonna put the cap on and I'm gonna shake this. So if you buy what I buy, this is a two pack. I can't remember how much it was on Amazon, but again, I'll put the link in the description box below. This was a two pack. You're gonna need two of these 30, M 30 milliliter bottles, 30 mLs, uh, maybe three, if you wanna use it in both of the soaps. All right, it's pretty well mixed up. Probably a bit runnier than it was to start with because it's probably more soapy and now I've just added a bunch of liquid to it so it's probably a bit runnier. That's okay. Let's see what it does. Yeah, definitely a little bit more watery, but that's okay because um, they can just put this on their loofah um, and in their hair and suds up and the whole point is to clean them and make them smell a little bit like this shield me essential oil if they are going outside this bottle will probably last us all summer long that would be my guess and that's four kids using it you know pretty regularly throughout the week um like i said we won't use it before church or before any like if we're going out anywhere nice, they don't need to smell like citronella. <laughs> really just need to smell that way when they're going outside. So this should last us all summer and I'll have the other bottle for next year. Hi friend. <laughs> all right, so I hope that you have enjoyed seeing how we kind of keep ticks and other bugs. The boys are dressed up in their Halloween costumes. Pretty sure I just saw Fortnite character go by. Anyway, um, this uh, is how we do our best to keep ticks and other bugs off of the boys during the summer months as naturally as possible. It works well. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this since the boys were little, taking any kind of unscented soap, 
putting some sort of bug essential oils in it and letting them wash with that. And that typically keeps ticks and things off of them. And I also add bug repelling essential oils to oils that we put on our skin when we're outside around the fire pit or when we're camping or anything like that. And that really works well too. So I hope that this is helpful to you guys. And if you have any other tips for keeping ticks off, I would love to hear that because I do not want to mess around with Lyme disease or any weird bacteria, illnesses, blah, all that stuff that they carry. So this is step one. Hopefully, if you have any other tips or ideas, I'd love to hear them because I'm all about doing the best I can to keep these boys healthy. <laughs> Okay, I finally got out of the house a little later than I had planned um, to get going, but that's okay. Um, I actually got this new product in the mail this week that I bought because this girl that I follow on Instagram recommended it and she's been using it for a while. Um, it's called a Brush X and I'll link to it in the description box below if I don't forget. It's actually this blow dryer that has like brush bristles on it. And my blow dryer that I have had, I seriously think I've had it since college, maybe since high school. I don't remember ever buying a blow dryer. It's just, it's lasted me so long, but it is finally on the fritz. It's so loud when I run it that I think the engine's gonna blow up any day now. So I've been thinking about getting another blow dryer, what kind do I want, all these things. And um, I have seen her Instagram stories a couple times where she's talking about using this and how it gives her hair a lot of volume and it dries it pretty quickly. Um, and it helps just make it really smooth so that she doesn't have to flat iron or do anything extra to her hair after she blow dries it. So I thought I would give it a try. She had a discount code um, and see if it worked well for me. Um, so I just got it in the mail and I just tried it today. Um, I think I'm gonna have to give it several times before I make my mind up completely about it. But today it, it dried my hair really well. And I mean, I, I don't know, I guess it's got some volume. Um, normally I would blow dry my hair and then I would put like curls in it um, if I were gonna curl it. So I would still have to do that if I wanted that sort of style. But just, you know, when I'm wearing it straight, it's, um, it's really nice and smooth and shiny and I didn't feel like I needed to take my big, I've got like an inch and a half barrel curling iron and sometimes I'll kind of just curl the ends under after I blow dry my hair. I didn't feel like I needed to do that because the, the brush on the dryer is kind of like an oval shape and so you kind of twist it as you're drying your hair and it kind of curls in the ends. So it kind of makes your hair look nice and finished. So anyway, um, I did that today. That put me a little bit behind um, in getting ready again the first time I've used it. And I always feel like you're a little slower with things the first time you use them until you get a hang. Um, sorry, I have a hair in my face. <laughs> I can, until you get a hang of how to use it uh, correctly. And then I made the boys some tick shampoo, which you will have already seen that because I threw that clip in earlier um, because they're gonna be outside playing tonight. They're gonna be helping Dean. Um, and they just need to take a shower either, you know, when they come in this evening or whatever. And I wanted to go ahead and have that stuff made up because um, it's, it's almost summer and it's getting hot out and the ticks are on the move and we need to get that kind of thing done. So I don't have to stress so much about every little tick that I see on their clothes, me wearing that it bit them or <laughs> something. Sorry for the weird lighting, I am in the car. Um, okay. So quickly, what I wanted to tell you guys is I'm on my way to Johnson City. I have a ton of stuff to do. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this on YouTube or not, but I know I mentioned it in one of my email letters several weeks ago. If you aren't signed up for those yet, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below. Definitely go sign up because I share a lot of behind the scenes kinds of things and a lot of helpful information. I only send those letters out two times a month. Um, so I am not gonna clog up your inbox with a bunch of stuff. They're really long letters, but um, you can pick and choose what you wanna read in them. Um, but anyway, so one of the things I mentioned a while ago was I joined this course um, from a YouTuber that I have followed for a while now. And it's a course on developing your personal style because I feel like I'm kind of at this crossroads and um, sorry, I'm going around a corner out my phone fall. <laughs> um, I. I feel like I'm kind of at this crossroads of style where 
I don't, I'm just, I'm tired of just like buying things that look good on other people or are stylish and then they don't look good on me. And it's like, I want to know what kinds of clothes fit my body shape, um, work for my style, like the things that I like, um, are appropriate for my age, just, uh, the, the place that I'm going. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I need a style overhaul in a way. And so, um, I followed this girl on YouTube for a while and I decided to take this course with her. It's a nine week course and you just go through it as you, as you have time. And I've just slowly worked my way through it. And one of the things, the last things that I did was I completely cleaned out my closet and I pulled out all kinds of stuff that either wasn't my style or I haven't worn it in a year or it doesn't fit correctly. Um, I don't know, all sorts of things. I just basically cleaned out my closet and I had, I think one thing that I had to throw away and everything else needed to be sold. So I'm headed to Johnson City and I have a bag of clothes and I have a bag of shoes in the back of my car that I'm gonna drop off at, we have a Play-Doh's closet in Johnson City, which is kind of like a consignment store for gently worn things. We also have a store called Hut 8 that does the same thing. I did not call them and ask them about drop off because I called Plato's closet and they were like, just drop it off anytime, come back within an hour and we'll give you what we don't keep and pay you for what we do keep. And so instead of me trying to sell it myself, instead of me setting up like a Poshmark account and putting stuff on and taking pictures and shipping things to people, I don't want to deal with any of that. I just want to take it to the store and consign it. Yes, I know I may not get as much money from it, but that's okay with me. I'm, I'm actually okay with that. Um, nothing, I don't, I think <laughs> I'll probably will lose the most money on the shoes because the shoes that I am selling, I've worn just a couple of times. I don't know that I'll get great money out of them, but the clothes, I don't think I have anything in there that's like, I'm expecting to get a lot of money for. So it's fine. I've got to do that today though. I am so happy to have that closet cleaned out and I have been slowly building back my wardrobe this year with like spring and summer clothes, sticking with a lot of neutrals because that's the first thing that you restock your closet with are neutrals that are like really um, core pieces that you'll wear all year round, a lot of them, um, just your basics. And then um, I think like in another lesson that I haven't watched yet, she will talk about how to build out your wardrobe with like style pieces that match your personal style. I haven't gotten there yet, but I am happy with some of the things that I have been stocking in my closet. Um, I, when I finish the course and maybe even when I've gone through it with my fall and winter wardrobe, I think I would like to share a little bit more about it with you guys. I don't know if I'll share it in my letters first or on a blog post or maybe in a YouTube video, but um, I'll share the name of it and the link and everything. I don't really want to talk about it too much yet because I haven't gone through the whole thing and I'm not, I'm just not done with it yet. So I don't want to recommend something that I haven't even finished myself, but when I do finish it, and so far I'm loving it and I'm not thinking that it wouldn't be something that I would recommend to you guys. I'll tell you more about it when I'm done though. Um, but anyway, so I am in this process of getting rid of stuff that I don't wear anymore or don't like and rebuilding my closet to fit me now at this place, this season in my life. So I've got to do that today. That's one of the first things I have to do. Um, I actually have to stop at a store and see if they have any seed potatoes for our garden. Um, nowhere in town where we live in town has them. So as I go out of town, I'm going to stop at the store. We're looking for either white or yellow potatoes. I would like some red potatoes and I would like some sweet potatoes. Those three things to put in our garden. Um, so that's the first thing I have to do. Um, then I have to go drop these clothes off. Then I need to go to Sam's Club because I have to stock up on snacks for C students for this Wednesday. Um, we need snacks and drinks, so I've got to buy that. And I actually have some things that I need to buy for myself there. Um, and I need to get gas and stop running over these rumble strips <laughs> on the side of the road. Um, let's see. After that, I will probably go to Walmart because um, Uriah is wanting another fish trap and they have them there. The kind that he likes are there. Um, he actually bought himself a fish trap and Ezra dropped something on one of them and broke it. So I said I would replace it. So I've got to go get that for him and pick up just a little bit of odds and ends um, at Walmart. And then I'm going to go across the road to Lowe's because 
here's the big thing. I'm really excited about this. So we have finished all of the crown molding and baseboard in our house. And I think there's only like a tiny little bit that needs to be caulked or painted to just completely finish that product or that project up. And I'm so excited to have it totally done. The next big project um, will be in the study and it will be the floor. Um, oh, there's rumble strips again. Anyway, um, I will be helping Dean with that as he needs my help. For the most part, I think he can do that on his own, but if he needs me, I will be there to help uh, him get the floor in. But my big project this year is redoing my kitchen cabinets. Now, if you've seen any videos in my kitchen, and I actually don't even think I was vlogging when we moved into this house and we were working on it, but long story short, we had 30 days to get whatever we wanted done in our house before we moved in. And so we did all of the big projects, like the flooring. We, we ripped out all the carpet, put the hardwood floor in. And one of the big things was repainting all the kitchen cabinets. So we used this stuff that um, you, it would take the varnish off of pre-finished cabinets and that way you could paint them without having to completely strip the cabinets because we didn't have time for that so it was either leave the cabinets this like maple color which i i just didn't want that i wanted white cabinets or use this stuff so i used this stuff and turns out it didn't work because if you've noticed in any of my kitchen uh in videos that i'm shooting in the kitchen some of the paint is peeling on the cabinets and it's at first i was kind of touching up the cabinets but now it's just to the point where it's like there's no no way I'm going to just keep touching it up. It looks bad. I'm just going to completely redo it. Now I have time to actually seriously strip the cabinets, um, get all the paint off, sand them really well, and then finally repaint them. And I'm actually thinking that I'm not going to go with white cabinets this time. I'm not 100% on what I'm going to do, but I have some ideas, some Pinterest images of kitchens that are like English country kitchens that I like. And I'm thinking I'm gonna take that creamy linen color that's on the top part of my walls, and I'm gonna pull that into the kitchen. I'm gonna repaint all of my yellow walls in my kitchen and dining room with that color. And I think I'm gonna paint the cabinets that color too. So my entire kitchen is gonna be that light creamy linen color. And then I'll finally get around to getting my backsplash done in the kitchen. And it will have, it's like a, I think it's called an obelisque tile. Um, that's a mixture of blues and greens and creams and yellows. So all the colors in my house that I picked out for our little color scheme, different shades of those colors, it'll really tie everything in together and that'll be on the backsplash and kind of separate the upper cabinets from the lower cabinets and, and I'll cut all of that cream. Um, I do want some color in there um, and we'll also have like uh, linens and hand towels and accessories and things that bring color into the kitchen. So it's not all just like a neutral color. So I'm thinking that my only other option would be to go with um, a darker cream color, like a uh, wheat or something like that, and paint the walls the light linen color so that the cabinets pop out from the walls a little bit. So anyway, I just found this one picture of this beautiful, beautiful English country kitchen and it was all that linen color. The walls and the cabinets were the exact same color. They had wooden countertops like I have, and I just thought, oh my gosh, that is so pretty. They didn't have upper cabinets, though. It was open shelving, and they were cream, too. Like, everything in there was cream, and it just looked so good. It made you really pay attention to what was sitting on the counters, um, bowls out on top of things, chairs here and there, little pictures or pieces of artwork, um, food that was on the counter. It just, I just thought it looked so good. It, it almost was like it didn't distract because it was all the same color and your focus was kind of like on the accessories in the kitchen. So I really liked that. So I, I kind of feel like I want to do that. But here's the deal. I don't want to do all this work and then paint it and hate it. But I also know that I can't stress over what color to paint it forever or it'll never get done. And I need this project done. Like I want these cabinets done so that they're not peeling and looking bad and I'm not putting it off year after year. This is our third year in the house. I want this project done. I want that backsplash done and I want my kitchen just done, like completely done. <laughs> this is a year of finishing projects, uh, little projects inside the house. Once I get the kitchen done, oh, so what I was saying, and there's brown, so I gotta turn around and go back to get the sea potatoes. Anyway, the whole point of this was me basically saying, 
I am going to Lowe's so that I can pick up all of the paint supplies that I need. I need to get a chemical stripper to get this paint off of the cabinets. And I need to get a scraper to scrape it all off. And I need to get some sandpaper squares that go in like a, it's like a hand sander. It's not a hand sander. It's like a, I don't know what it's called. Some sort of sander that sands things. Um, let's see if I can get out of here and go back. Cause I was chatting, talking, talking, and I missed my turn. All right, people. Okay, so I'm a little crooked because I keep setting my phone in this one spot because I don't have a phone holder yet. <sighs> it keeps falling over. Anyway, so after Lowe's, that's it. That's the last place I need to go, I think. So drop my clothes off. Go get these seed potato things. If they've got them, hopefully they have them. Walmart, Lowe's, Sam's Club. That's it. That's it. But it's going to take my whole night, I'm sure. Um, oh, and I've got to go to TJ Maxx, too. I totally forgot about TJ Maxx and Old Navy. I have clothes to take back from both of those places. And at TJ Maxx, I need to get some pillows to go on my bed. I'm actually working with a company. I'm going to tell you about them at some point um, in a blog post, not a YouTube video. But I'm working with a company um, to redo my bedding do a little bedding overhaul, a little bit more natural bedding. And I'm so excited and I need to get some pillows, some color pillows to go on my bed. So I'm gonna check out, and check out TJ Maxx tonight and see, um, whew, hot, see what they have. Um, yeah, so hopefully I will have time to get all of this stuff done. Um, I am here at Brown's, so I'm gonna run in and see if they have any of these seed potatoes that I need. I really hope they do because I really want to grow some sweet potatoes this year. Okay, so it's like 8.30 and I am at Walmart. I'm actually leaving Walmart. Um, I ran in here to see if they had a little fish trap for Uriah and they did not have one. So trying to decide if I'm gonna stop at another Walmart to see if they have it or not or just get home. I'm really tired. <laughs> um, I've been out all day and I did all my things and I'm just ready to go home because it's late and I have to drive like an hour to get home. So. <sighs> life in a rural area. This is it. All right. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and probably end this vlog here. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. And if you have any questions about anything that I have said, or you've seen today, definitely leave me a comment. I'm more than happy to answer your questions in the comment section below. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys have a good rest of the week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.